Two Trees new SP5 3D printer. In today's video, we'll go over setup and assembly, highlight the features, show you some first prints, and I'll give you my full review of the latest from Two Trees has to offer in the 3D printing world. It's in today's video and it's coming up next. All right, what's up everyone back at it again it is dw darkwing dad giving you a first look at two trees new core xy 3d printer now this thing is an absolute monster of a printer it has tons of great features right out of the box to give you some awesome prints time and time again but before we get into assembly and showing you some of those prints let me talk about some of the features this bad boy has to offer. The new SP5 3D printer by Two Trees is equipped with tons of great features. Some of those features include a more stable and sturdy Core XY design, a 300 by 300 by 330 build plate for large print volume, a lattice glass bed plate for advanced adhesion, a full color touch LCD, dual gear extruder, filament runout sensor, and resume print option. This printer also features linear rail support that's gonna allow you to print faster, all while retaining quality and precision in all of your 3D prints. Dual cooling fans will add to the precision and quality and the pre-installed silent board will keep it nice and quiet no matter what room you put it in. Now let's move along to setting the machine up. First things first, let's open the printer and start getting everything unpacked that we need for assembly. You can see here that there is a manual if you need a backup reference on assembly or parts. Go ahead, get your printer unpacked and we'll go everything step by step here, one by one, get this guy assembled. Once you have the box cleaned up and out of the way, we can go ahead and grab the base. That's where we're gonna wanna start. Grab the side rails and all of the pieces that we're gonna need for assembly. The linear side rails are installed facing inward. So you can go ahead and line those up with the gap that's on the bottom. And we're going to mount those in place with four M5 screws, two on each end. I like to move the hot end out of the way just because I put the printer on its side. I found it easier for insulation. Make sure you're not pinching these wires here uh, from the Z axis that are sticking out. Go ahead, put that on the side. Make sure each rail is secured and in place. Next, grab your top supports here. They are labeled the right and left facing the printer. The right is gonna go on the right with the label facing out, left on the left. You're then gonna grab the M530 screws. These are a little bit longer and circular in pattern. You're gonna go ahead and tighten those on until they're nice and snug. Then you can go ahead and put the bottom rubber supports on. I wanted to put these side rails on so when I tip it to the side, it gives it a little bit of support. One goes on each corner. Go ahead, screw those on, tighten them in place. You'll be good to go. Next, we're going to install the four corner supports. Uh, very important when you're doing this, just keep these two harnesses taped down so they don't get pinched when you're installing these. Uh, but you'll see on the top uh, support brackets here, there's this silver bolt. They line up with a notch, so make sure you line it up with the notch. If you don't do that, there's no way they're going to be able to slide those in. So line those up in the proper place, and then you can screw those in on the bottom once again using the M5 screws. I'm going to tilt this back and tighten these all in place. Next, you can grab the bag that says M516, and these are a round M5 screw. Two go on each bracket on the side, so go ahead and just put those on, tighten them in place, good to go. Once everything's nice and tight on the frame, you can go ahead and put the top in. Now, there are two stepper motors towards the front of the machine. What I found works best is kind of angle it, slide it on, kind of put a little bit of pressure, and everything will slide in place. We're going to use M516 to fasten this in place. The flat M5s go on top while the round ones go on the side. Next is just some additional support. We're gonna put these corner support mounts in. They go on every corner of the printer, so there's four total. Go ahead, get those screwed in place nice and tight, and then we'll move on to the next part. Here's just a quick shot of what those supports should look like. Again, one in each corner, four total. Next, we wanna go ahead and install the bed plate brackets, and those are installed with some M3 screws. They're gonna screw right on to the linear rail you can see right here. There are four total. Here's a shot after installation. They should freely move up and down. After that, we're going to install our Z rails. The best thing to do is line this up with the hole and just kind of let gravity take over. It'll just kind of corkscrew down into that bottom blue holder there. Make sure there's no binding, there's no friction that they freely move up and down. Once you've verified the bed support is moving freely and the rods are installed properly, you can go ahead and tighten them in place. 
Next, we're gonna install the Z support bracket. Very important, one of them does have the Z access limit switch that goes on the right of the printer if you're facing the machine. So go ahead and get that lined up. Just kind of let it fall into place there uh, on each side. You don't wanna put any friction or force. Uh, you could create binding within the Z rail. So just let it freely drop on there. Tighten those in place and then conceal the wire that's coming out for the Z limit switch. Next, install the heated bed plate with the supplied hardware, the fasteners, the screw, and the springs. So just go ahead and get those all tightened and in place. It should look something like this on your bed. Go ahead and remove the protective film and the insulator for the heat bed. This is just gonna help keep a constant temperature and act as an insulator for the heated bed. Next, you wanna go ahead and install your hot end. Again, this is all wired, but we do have to mount it uh, to the X gantry here. So there are supplied screws that you do have to remove, and then you're gonna reinstall those screws to have the hot end fastened in place. It should look something like this. Next, we have to install that X limit switch, which is gonna go and slide over and hit that little metal piece right there to make sure that it keeps everything in check. Loosen those screws and then tighten it back up. It should look something like this. Next, we can go ahead and install our dual extruder here. That just gets mounted on the side. Also go ahead and install the spring mechanism to release and load the filament. The spring just goes on here, just tighten it, and it should work nice and clean just like that. Then our filament mount, that's just gonna go a little bit below the extruder. Right about there is a good spot for it. And once again, you can see that spring-loaded mechanism working. Next, we're gonna install our Bowden tube. Uh, I'm gonna actually wait until the whole machine is actually powered up because we wanna have a really good seal when we install the Bowden tube. So uh, if it's not hot, it might not seal right. So I'm gonna get it in place, but we're gonna adjust that later. Next, you can kind of start plugging everything in. Uh, go ahead and install your main power. Uh, there are some stepper motors here for the X and the Y. Just follow all the labels. Everything is matched X and X, Y to Y. Here is for the extruder that goes on the side. Uh, the other harness there is for the filament sensor. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then you can go ahead and remove the tape and run these harnesses here up to the top. Again, one is going to plug into the Y, the other is going to plug into the X. Then you can go ahead and just do any wire concealing that you need to with the wire concealers or zip ties, things like that. Just kind of start tidying everything up. Here's the filament sensor that I was talking about. That is just supposed to kind of free hang and float uh, as the filament goes through it. So go ahead and kind of zip tie that in place. And then we'll move on to tidying up some more wires. Next, use the supplied snail clamp to fasten the main harness going to the hot end in place. You don't want it too loose, but you don't want it too tight. So just go ahead and move the hot end carriage forwards and back just to make sure nothing's binding or getting snagged. Next, you can slide the glass bed on and install that for preparation. Use these supplied clamps that come with it. Uh, there's these little rubber pieces that go into the bottom just to support the glass bed. Go ahead and finger tighten them. And then when you get it lined up, you can give those just a little bit of a turn to make it tighter with a Phillips head screwdriver. So then again, just another double check on the wires, making sure everything's clean, zip tying everything in place. We'll go ahead and rotate our machine around and get it fired up. So here's just a quick look at the main menu. Uh, basically what we wanna do is we wanna preheat our machine. So go ahead to preheat. Uh, you can flip back and forth between the hot end and the bed. So just below the plus sign, there's a little option there. And when you tap that, it's gonna go from extrusion to hot bed. I spoke on that Bowden tube. We wanna go ahead and preheat our hot end. And then I snipped mine down because it was a lot longer than what needed. So trim the Bowden tube down, made sure it was at about 220 degrees. That way it's creating a nice seal. Reinstall your Bowden tube, hook it up to the extruder and you're good to go. Next, we wanna go ahead and level our bed using the five point measuring system here. So go ahead and just grab a piece of paper and go to each point on the bed, turning the leveling nuts left or right to tighten or loosen. When your bed's leveled, we can continue to a test print. Using the supplied filament, we can see here that we have a nice flow through the hot end and the nozzle. Next, grab the supplied SD card and you can go ahead and do a test print. Uh, there were no test prints on there, so I just chose to do my own quick little print here just to see how everything was going. But you can see here, everything is homing fine. Everything's working good. After all the proper adjustments, we are ready to test print. While printing, you are of course able to adjust things. You can pause the print, stop the print. You can go to options. You can change your fan settings, your temperature settings. If the Z is too close, you can go ahead and manually adjust that. You can adjust the measurement of how far you want the Z to move up and move down. Uh, basically everything you need to tweak on the fly is right here at your fingertips. Everything's looking pretty good on this print. So we're gonna let this finish out and see how it finishes. And after about 45 minutes here, a nice, clean, successful test print, along with a handful of other test prints that turned out absolutely great. Overall, very nice printer from Two Trees here. Let me wrap this video up and give you my final thoughts on the SP5.
So as you can see there, the SP5 leaves no stone unturned. Right out of the box, this thing is absolutely chocked full of awesome features. You've seen the quality of the prints, absolutely amazing. You know, there's so many things that this printer has just included with it that really makes it overall a great printer. Obviously that nice core XY design. Uh, the dual cooling fans are absolutely awesome. That gives you just open availability to any orientation you want in the build plate. The dual gear extruder, the silent board, so, so important. There's a lot of these core XY machines and a lot of them are right around the same price point, but they're not gonna give you all the great features that the SP5 gives. The linear rails, the fast printing, which everyone is after nowadays, most of the time, my other printers that I have, I rarely exceed you know, 65, 70 millimeters per second. With this one, everything I was printing was between 100 and 125 millimeters per second. You've seen the quality of the prints. They still came out absolutely awesome. As I mentioned, whether you're a novice or whether you're a veteran, this is definitely a printer that should be on your radar. Gives an absolutely great price point and fantastic quality to match. You know, everybody always talks about upgrading 3D printers and things like that. But again, I'll reiterate myself, this printer has so many nice features, you know, right out of the box. Down the road, the only thing I can really see upgrading on this printer is uh, potentially adding a Capricorn Bowden tube and the silicone bed mounts. Obviously, if you're printing at faster speeds, uh, sometimes the bed can just become unlevel over time. However, uh, the amount of prints that I've done on this for a solid week, I had no issues with having to re-level the bed. So once you get that bed leveled, uh, the way this machine is constructed, it really holds all the initial calibration really nice. Really solid machine, definitely two thumbs up here. And if you are interested in picking one of these up, I did leave my affiliate link in the description box. You can go ahead, click that link, it'll take you to the Two Tree site. It'll give you different purchase options for this printer, along with the ability to add some accessories or some upgrades, like filament dry boxes, nozzles, or maybe replacement parts that you may need when the time comes. I'd like to thank Two Trees for allowing me to showcase this printer and show what it's capable of. It's an absolutely awesome machine, and if you do pick it up, you will not be disappointed. I'd also like to thank each and every one of you for taking your time out of your day to watch this video. If you did enjoy the video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments in regards to the printer or anything towards Two Trees, go ahead and drop me a comment. You know I'll make sure to reply. And of course, if you do enjoy all things 3D printing, cosplay, DIY, and really anything 3D printer related, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I've got a lot more new videos on the horizon and hopefully a couple more with Two Trees. Well, that's pretty much it for my video and the review of the SP5. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to go ahead and check out this printer and check out Two Trees on other social media platforms. Go ahead and give them a like, a subscribe, a follow, and tell them DW sent you. I'm gonna keep testing the limits of this printer and see just what she's capable of. So make sure to click that subscribe button and come back and see more. Until next time, it's DW out. Later.